Greetings, everybody. My name is Tyler Ellison, and I'm so thrilled to be here with you in this wonderful video where we are going to be exploring the astrological influences and powers of our date of April 19th, 2024. So let's dive in. Most of this day is going to be ruled by the star Zavi Java, one of my favorite stars. This is a star of erotic love. This is a star of friendship. It is a star of personal magnetism and heart-based connections. It's a great time for dating. It is a great time for flirtation. If you're courting somebody, if you are opening your heart in a seductive way to somebody that's a potential lover, or even your current lover, maybe it's you and your husband or you and your wife, this is a great time to lay it on thick, as they say, right? To really put yourself out there, to do a little peacocking, if you will. This type of lovely influence will be present for most of the day until 1049, 1050 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where the stellar influence is going to change to one of my favorite stellar influences, and that is that of Spica from the constellation Virgo. So Spica is connected to the chat, the, the wheat that the woman the Virgin of Spica is holding. And wheat is a symbol for earth. It is a symbol for money. It is a symbol for the prosperity and the fertility that nature embodies and produces. So this star is very useful for healing. Virgo is one of the most medically oriented signs. So this star of Spica is very good for healing on any level. It is very good for building proper love between a man and a woman, a husband and wife. What do I mean by proper love? A love that is free from excessive selfish desires, right? There are some loves that are formed between um, couples, uh, different people. And sometimes those loves are more so based in lust. They are more so based in power or personal gain. And it's a conditional love. And some conditions I think are fine, right, in terms of what we're willing to accept and not accept in our relationships. But sometimes those conditions uh, can cause lovers to turn against each other. Uh, so it's not really a stable love. So Spica helps us to produce this very balanced, earth-centered, stable love that is more divinely reflective of the love of source instead of the lower forms of terrestrial love, which are also valid, but of course don't tend to produce as high degrees of long-term happiness. So this type of divine love, heart-based love, this can really be cultivated during this time. Spica is also very useful for money magic, money manifestations, working with its power, can strengthen investments. It can strengthen your finances in a lot of ways. And what's really amazing is that it has a hidden quality, and that is that of severance, breaking apart, transcending limitation. So think of the things in your life that may be keeping love at arm's length, or might be keeping prosperity at arm's length, or might be keeping your healing at arm's length. Make a list. What are those things? And maybe do an inventory and ask yourself, am I contributing to that? Am I contributing to that limitation? And if you find that the answer is yes, and that's the case for so many of us, myself included, this is a great time to harness this speaking power and to destroy the limitations. And I use that word destroy. It's a very masculine, powerful word. And I think in Western society, because of all the wars that have happened, we shy away from using destruction as a power. But nature, which we are, clearly uses destruction regularly in its maintenance of life. A little bit of destruction is needed to create the limits. Too much destruction, and well, you've melted your uh, ice sculpture, whatever the hell you're, you're making, right? Too much destruction. We destroy the conditions for life to exist. So we are like this. If we become pure Mars embodiments, it's too much destruction, right? That might be a lot of fire and we unintentionally create some chaos. We need a little bit though to help us refine our personalities, to help us refine our energies, to cut off the dead branches, so to say, to cut off the vines that might be growing up your tree of life, right? Maybe that vine is uh, too many cookies on the weekend, or maybe that vine is uh, feeling like people don't listen to you. 
And as a result, you don't express yourself. Well, you can use the speak and energy to obliterate those blockages. And I encourage you to know, play around with that fiery energy. The new age communities tend to really emphasize very gentle feminine forms of transformation and healing. And those are generally much safer because it's a cooler way to transform. The issue is it can take longer, right? The feminine process is more slow. Masculine process tends to be very quick. And what's nice is with the speak and energy, it's such a feminine power that when you use its destructive element, it's guided by this type of gentle yin essence. So I encourage you, use this time to liberate yourselves. I know I will. So join me in that. Let's refine the self together. Let's become more embodying of our inherent perfection that exists within that soul level. So our influences for the speaking powers are that of Venus and Mars. And this is where we see it, right? Venus, planet of love right? Planet of pleasure, domain of the goddess. Then of course we have Mars, right? The destroyer, right? The seen as the righteous warrior king, oftentimes holding a spear and wearing a type of Spartan helmet, right? So these two powers. So as you can see, the planetary influences are really going to be supportive for these type of speaking properties that we mentioned. So our number for the day is actually a master number, which is super cool. It's 22. But of course, we can reduce that to four, which reveals our hidden influence, which is Jupiter, because Jupiter's planetary number is four. So again, mirroring the speak and energies, Jupiter is a planet of wealth, abundance, divine alignment, and ultimately fun, right? Uh, if, you, if you like fun, work with Jupiter, invoke Jupiter. A great way to do it is get some crystals that are connected to Jupiter or metals, right? It's metal is tin. So I'm sure on Etsy or some kind of artist based website, you could find tin jewelry, right? And wear this on the days where Jupiter is active and see if you feel a difference, right? By wearing the planet's metal, you become a channel for the planet. By wearing the color of a planet, you become a channel for that planet. Right. If you carry the tarot card associated with the planet, you become a channel for that planet. So when you arm yourself with corresponding items that mirror the planet's nature, the planet shines its light upon you. It notices you. So we have to remember these planets are not inert objects. They are gods. They're living beings, macro consciousness, much more ancient than we are. They were here long before us. They're going to be here long after us. And humanity will still be dancing to their music, as it has done for aeons. The tarot card of the day is that of justice, which gives us a very powerful Libran connection, right? And this card has a woman. Oftentimes, it's Ma'at of the Egyptian pantheon, the goddess of justice. She's holding scales in one hand, a sword in the other hand, and this card encourages us to maintain balance. So if you have a lot going on in your life, feel like you can't slow down, let that be your warning sign to slow down. Don't move too quick. Don't burn the candle at both ends. You're going to need that wax for the remainder of the year, right? That wax of your candle, it's going to get you all the way to winter, right? So don't burn the candle at both ends. Take care of yourself. Remain neutrified, hydrated, well-rested. Make sure your body's moving. Maintain your baseline at all costs so you can support yourself, so you can support your families, and so you can have a healthy, long life full of opportunities for you to be yourself and express whatever your true will is, your purpose, why you're here. So this card also encourages us to follow in the same type of encouragement that Spica offers, which is the severing of old ties, right? The reason she's holding the sword is because she represents the cutting away of illusion, the cutting away of whatever is unnecessary. So this is a, it is a, powerful card. It's one of severance. It's a severe card, but it's a truthful card in that when we cut away the falsities, we're left with reality. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Reality is magical. Reality is sacred. And reality is your creation. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. The other dimensions of this card are built into the name, right? It is the Justice Tarot card. 
So this is a great time to donate. If you are looking to donate to different causes whom are helping injustice, that can be really useful. If there's an injustice in your life that you can correct, that you can take action to mend and to realign, I encourage you to do that. This is going to be a card of, I, call, I call it divine correction, right? This is where we look at what we would call on the human level, the errors that we've made, the errors within our actions, our way of thinking. It's a time of correction to get all that realigned so we can see clearly. So we don't live life with the blindfold on, right? We can take that off and meet reality on reality's terms, which sets the stage for us being able to influence reality. If we can't accept reality as it is, we don't have the ability to magically influence it. If we are living in our own world, not accepting the world before us, from a negative motivation, our own world that we are creating will not be able to penetrate into the collective sphere. So I'm all about creating your own universe and dwelling in it. I'm all about creating a world in your heart and mind and dwelling in it, 100%. Our caution is disassociation. We don't want to become so wrapped up in our own world that we're not matching, you could say, the energy of the room, right? If we're not meeting reality on reality's terms, if we're not having that connection with others, then we can be in our own world, but no one's going to be able to meet us there. So if you're creating a magical universe, remember, you have to be able to bring the world with you. Right, Because the world is an extension of you. And if you are going to connect the dots and understand the mystery of your collective self, who you are on the biggest level and the smallest level, you're going to need some help from the world, from your other reflections. The universe will use people to demonstrate miracles, to demonstrate synchronicities, to teach lessons, to remind us of things. So remember, every person that you see is God in drag. Never forget this. We're always interacting with God, with the Holy Spirit. Whenever you're interacting with another sentient being, you are looking at a child of God. You're looking at the Holy Spirit. You're looking at God itself wearing this costume. So always remember this. And if you treat people like that, you're going to bring out the God in them, the goddess in them. They're going to feel good and they're going to like it. You're going to help change their lives just through a simple interaction and Imagine what that will reveal inside of you. So you have a lot to look forward to. Enjoy these energies, my friends. And I will see you tomorrow for our following video related to the 20th of April, 2024. Be well, my friends, and enjoy this glorious here and now.